Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who's going to be talking about the new album by Dave. We are all alone in it together. This is probably the best album title I've seen all year and one of my favorite album titles of all time. And I actually have a little bit of a history with Dave. I reviewed his last album, Psychodrama, when it came out a couple of years ago, and it was my first sort of successful video. I think it was my first video that ever got over 400 views. So, you know, I, I think a lot about Dave and, and about his progress, and when I first reviewed him, I had, I had no idea anything about him, I had no expectations, and when I reviewed Psychodrama, I was just blown away. If you've never seen it, it's a pretty good video for one of my older ones. I focus a lot on how we could maybe draw Dave into the concept of uh, inter sort of international negritude, as M. A. Césaire uh, outlined it in the 20th century, and and I was very happy with that review, and I was very happy to to listen to that music. Now, after that, I didn't pay attention. I live in Western New York. I don't live in England, so I didn't actually pick up on the fact that he became really popular and really big, and he won the Mercury, which is like the British Grammys or whatever, and he became something of a superstar of British hip-hop. So I guess the question that I want to ask now is, you know, with this album, this album after, you know, an album that I consider to be a masterpiece of, at least of social messaging, right? At least his, his song, Black, I think is one of the great hip-hop songs of this decade, right? Um, does he disappoint? Is it disappointing? Has success ruined him? Is this album as good as Psychodrama? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of... Is it disappointing given how good the title is? We're all alone in this together, okay? How could you follow up a title so unbelievably good, funny, interesting, meaningful? You know, you hear a title like that and you think, oh, this must be about like COVID, right? Because for the whole past year and a half, all we've been hearing is, we're in this together even though we're far apart. It's this weird sort of uh, counterintuitive messaging that we've been getting. Um, but actually, I think it's more about, about England and I think it's actually more about humanity, just about this sort of weird state that we're in where we're always together, but also totally separate and totally alone. So does it disappoint? I will answer that by the end of this video. Um, it is a very odd mixture, I would say, uh, in many different ways. At times, he's still very conscious and, and has that sort of wears the mantle of a very conscious rapper who talks about the difficulties of being the son of immigrants and talks about the plight of being black in the world, uh, the plights of immigrants all over the world, the plight of his family in specific, you know, very meaningful songs. But then there's a whole other side in which he's just super flossy and talking about his watches and his cars and his money. And it's kind of incongruous. I think that's Maybe a symbol of maybe more international rap in general, which tends to have a better balance of those two things as opposed to American rap, which tends to be one or the other. And then in terms of his, his lyrical delivery, it's like sometimes he raps so clearly, it makes me wish I were still an English professor or an English teacher in France. You know, I did teach English in France and it's hard because hip hop, the first thing I ever taught when I, when I was a teacher was I gave a lesson on uh, Dear Mama you know, the song by Tupac. And I'll never forget, a student raised, raised their hand there in Marseille and said, uh, uh, Professor Sky, uh, what's beef? <laughs> and I had to explain what beef is. The, the way that he delivers so many of these rhymes, that Dave delivers so many of these rhymes, is so clear, so concise. You, you're, I'd be tempted to say it's just too on the nose, it's just too simple. But it has that kind of almost pedagogical style to it, where he's just very clearly says exactly what he's saying, especially when he's in his conscious mode. But then when he's kind of flossing, when he's talking about his money, he speaks in this totally obscure, arcane, impossible to understand slang where he just uses initials and words and, and places in London, I suppose, I've never heard of. So it's a, all, all together, it's just this weird mixture. The beats on the whole album in general are quite mournful. They're quite sad. A lot of it's um, produced uh, by James Blake, who I suppose is a very popular musician in England. He's known a little bit here, but not particularly, not that popular here. Very kind of piano based, very mournful. My favorite thing about the production though is when there's no production or when there's very little. His voice, Dave's voice, is one of those it's a nice thing in hip hop when this happens, where someone has a completely commanding voice. 
You know, sometimes they drop out instruments so there's just one instrument playing underneath. In one occasion, there's just his voice. But he has a strength in the timbre to his voice. And he doesn't sound like somebody who's trying to sound strong and take over everything, right? But he has just such a, 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 a distinctive, yet not spectacular, like, like there's nothing about his voice that's, that's like a trademark voice. It's just the way that he rhymes, but it has a real strength to it that is absolutely at the very center of the album. And one of my favorite things about the production of it is it makes sure that we're never away from his voice. He begins almost every verse with look. And the way he says look is you just, <laughs> you just know. It's, it's like when you're on a, on, a, on a roller coaster, you know, and there's that point right at the top where you're just a little bit calm before it falls under. So you're like, you know, the beat comes in, look, and then you go down. Was that a good metaphor? <laughs> I don't know if that was a good metaphor or simile for that matter. I don't have a script, I just have notes. I'm just thinking that off the top of my head. Put in the comments if that was a good simile or not. The themes on this album tend to be conscious or it seems to be that he's also struggling with his fame. He's talking about it, he's discussing it. You know, what do these cars mean? What does it mean to be so rich and so popular? Um, most of the songs are very long. It's a very long album with very consciously extended out songs. Sometimes there'll be like a second part that feels like it's a whole nother song. I can't tell if that's a strength or a weakness. I think it's a strength because usually the second part is to do something different. But it's a different kind of experience if, if you're used to listening to hip hop, which is a little bit more, uh, you know, punchy. Four minutes in, four minutes out, as opposed to like seven, eight, nine minute songs. I would say, on the whole, um, the, the biggest disappointment that I have is not that he doesn't do the exact same thing. Because Psychodrama, what's nice about Psychodrama is it's basically a theme album around going to therapy and dealing with the trauma of life on the streets, right? It's like using a lot of the terminology and techniques of therapy to deliver a rap album. Very good. Great, great, great album. In this case, it starts off with the sound of, like a, of a film starting. You know, like a film projector counting down the deep, deep, deep in the back. But it doesn't really follow through. It seems like we're going to have a big extended metaphor about life being a movie, but then it's not really there. The album cover features an interpretation of, of a famous Claude Monet painting, the painting that created the term Impressionism, as a matter of fact. Um, but it doesn't quite give into that either. But there's some kind of lack of unification on this album, which I don't like. But at the same time, maybe it's better. Maybe it's better if he doesn't have to do that every album. You know, this is my therapy album. This is my movie album. The next album will be my, I don't know, book album or whatever. So it's good. So, as far as the stamp goes, if you don't know, on my channel, I, I like to take one song, analyze it a little bit more than the rest as a kind of example song of what is good about an album. We Are All Alone, the first track. I'm just going to start there. It starts off with that film strip sound, has a cool kind of jazzy underwater sample, very far away, subtle beat. All the beats on this album are very subtle. The drums only come in for the first chorus. He uses this quite a bit, taking drums out. A lot of these lyrics hit very hard. It's the kind of on-the-nose lyrics I was talking about. Child of an immigrant, lifestyle frivolous. Round here we keep bad company because then people pay dividends. What's the point of being rich when your family ain't? It's like flying first class on a crashing plane. Interesting, nice idea, good way to put it. The second verse then, after the chorus, and the chorus is just him saying, we're all alone in this together. And it's just very quiet. And then these drums come in, he talks about his dreams. And this is where he starts to get a little bit flossy. The flight is to Santorini, the cars are Lamborghini, the cheese, the cheddar, the mozzarella, the fettuccine. <laughs> Making me hungry. Um, and then it leads into the second part. So that then we all of a sudden have some piano all alone. And there's this drumless whole second section to the song. Where he talks about saving a kid who's suicidal. And that that's a way he's able to justify his past bad actions, you know. And then squeezed in there is this theme of his life being a film. I knew that my life was a film from when I had to share a bed with my mom and I was pissing myself. I just want my flowers while I'm here so I can put them at the front of the grave I've been digging myself. So a really beautiful image of him sleeping in the same bed as his mother and bedwetting at the same time. Dave is from that first album and this album very insistent on vulnerability my favorite theme on this album, the, the strength 
of vulnerability, and Dave is very conscious of that. Um, and then it ends with a voicemail of someone saying that he's been cast into a movie. So it sets up this whole beautiful idea of here comes this whole album, just like we had the therapy sessions in, in Psychodrama, but it's not there. Still, it's a great song filled with great, clever, funny, interesting lyrics. The next song is called Verdansk, Verdansk, which is apparently a place in Call of Duty. I don't know. This is more about like being hard. It's more about like fighting beef. It's about like live life in the streets. And here's a good example of the kind of lyrics I just don't understand because I'm not from South London or North London or any part of London. I'm not even from New London, New Connecticut. Uh, let's see here. You ain't got a rack to your name, bro. Brick Lane. We don't know about Shoreditch. Rental, I never insured it. M25, gotta whip that calmly. Man tried beef with my Darjee. Warzone ting. How I come third party. I just, I don't know what any of that means. What? Dargi? Is it, is that a bad word? Did I just say a bad word? Am I not supposed to say Dargi? I, I hope, I hope that's not an offensive word. I don't know what it means. Is that the D word in some other language? I don't know, but that's a good example of, so we can have that previous verse where he says everything so clearly about his life and he's talking about it and it's just very matter of fact. And then here, he's talking about Shoreditch and M25. I don't know. Next track is called Clash, very much you know, bragging about his watches. He's talking about some weird political references about like, I think it's about sleeping with a woman who's a, like kind of a far right leaning republicly, Tory putting in labor, they're Jeremy Corbyn, all these sorts of weird names I hear when I accidentally listen to the BBC News. <laughs> Lots of clever wordplay, doesn't quite do it for me though. This is another example of just line after line after line where everything seems to mean sort of something but isn't like a statement about anything. Stormzy is on this, uh, which is just nice. I like his voice, it sounds good. Um, has kind of a weird sort of froggy voice, which plays nicely against the sort of straight delivery of Dave. And then In the Fire, which at first I didn't like too much because it's sort of like a posse track and I generally don't like posse tracks. Um, but there's some really great rhymes in here, especially someone named Getz. I think it's the third or fourth verse on here. Just a spectacular verse. And the whole thing is well centralized. So if you're gonna have a posse track, it's important that you don't just put on people, what do I know? I'm talking like I'm a music producer. In my opinion, what I like in a posse track is not just like everybody bring their hot verse. This is, a, this is a centralized posse track in which each rapper raps about being in the fire, like from the fire, like being born in the fire, the fire of the ghetto, the fire of poverty, the fire of being marginalized by society, by immigrant status, all those things. And it's a beautiful idea. So at some point someone says like, I'm, I'm so used to being in the fire that I get the chills when I'm in a sauna, <laughs> something like that. But it's all unified around that idea, which makes it really a step above most posse tracks. And at the very end, I think it's Dave who says that he's being a voice for the voiceless, which is just nice because you know I, d I did create a minor at the school where I work at, although my school is in no way affiliated with this channel. Um, I did create a minor in hip hop studies and that's what I always say, that what hip hop does is it's a voice for the voiceless and it really is the main value of hip hop. That is what it has brought the world more than anything else. Um, and there's sort of a, like a gospel beat. So the whole thing starts off like a gospel sound and then this gospel voice in the back. And I just, I just always enjoy seeing whenever Kanye does something, how people follow it a couple of years later. And here's kind of more, more, more Kanye influence here. Then we get to Three Rivers, which is one of those songs I was talking about I would like to teach. <laughs> I'd love to teach this song in a class, right? Very delicate piano beat, and it's all about immigrants. Three verses about what is it to be British? You know, can you be British? The first one is about a very specific wave of immigration from the Caribbean, in particular from Jamaica, and you're not really British enough. Right. Uh, the second uh, verse is about Slavs in the 90s, I believe. You know, my wife is, is Serbian, so uh, Yugoslavian, became Serbian. You know, so that's interesting. Like, because it's a verse where he's rapping about somebody who lives in England and beats his wife and beats his kids. So it's a song about a, an immigrant who's a bad person. You know, so I think this is necessary. I think it's necessary to acknowledge that the reason that, that we need 
every country needs more immigrants, always, without exception. That's what every country needs. That is what I believe. Um, it's not because every single person who comes in is a good person or a bad person. It's just, it's the duty of humanity to take care of each other. And so even though this family is experiencing all this trouble and the person, these people who we, you know, who England has admitted in the 90s during the, during the Balkan Wars or whatever, they're still, they still need a place where they could possibly thrive. So he takes it from the 80s to the 90s and then takes it to the 2020s by talking about presumably Syrians in the third verse and about the life that they've been living and what led them here. And I, I um, there's a lot of this in French rap, but in American rap, Americans just don't care. I mean, in general, African-American rappers are not keyed in to the importance of immigration, right? That's just not a theme that... that um, that speaks to their life directly in many cases, not all cases, obviously. So this is just having this song as an example to be able to play, I am certain, I'm certain, in my life I will use this song, just like I've used the song Black, as a way to teach about these important issues in a way that's enjoyable and engaging. The next song is called System. I don't like it. My notes say super, where is it? Super whack beat. I'm sorry, they can't all be hits. I don't know, he's talking about all these soccer players, like very specific references to soccer, I'm, I'm sorry, football players, I'm not sorry, I'm an American. Uh, but you know, I gotta talk about this, it's okay. It's kind of, there's kind of interesting about like, this verse about a girl and the different means of communication, like SMS, it's clever, it's kind of funny, it's sort of good, but in general, I, I, don't, I don't love it. Next track, Lazarus does really cool things where it's not really like the reggaeton style of system, but it's something kind of South American with the rhythm here. And the way that the verse, the way that he raps with this beat is just awesome. I can't describe it. I actually can't. I'm sorry. I have a lot of words. I don't know how to describe this. Listen to the song Lazarus by Dave. <laughs> Try in the comment section, describe, okay? Describe this really cool subtle beat how is he wrapping his words around these rhythms? It's really nice. Law of Attraction is another miss, at least for me. Like this woman singing and it's okay. I just don't really feel it's like talking about a woman and how he loves her and how he mistreats her. Lots of talk about what bags does he buy her. Just want to mention again, this is a thing that's happened a lot in hip hop in the past, over the past decade. The amount of talking about cars that you own has gone down. The amount of talking about bags that you buy has gone up to the point where the luxury goods that are most talked about in hip hop are no longer like Louis Vuitton suits or whatever, or shirts. It's like the Birkin bag or the Louis Vuitton bag. That's weird. Both sides of a smile is very nice for me. I'm happy because I didn't, the thing I was afraid of was that I'm just here and I just like the hardcore hip hop songs. I don't like anything with singing or whatever, but James Blake's on here, he's singing, it's nice. It's another soft song, but it's much better than the previous ones. A really nice verse where it's kind of a story of a relationship devolving and he starts quoting this woman and then a woman's voice comes in and takes over. And as always, my favorite thing that Dave does is he presents his own weaknesses. And it's clear he's not a good boyfriend, he's cheating and all these things. And he sort of allows this woman to have a voice. And then kind of weirdly, one second, I'm sorry. I just see this on my bookshelf. Um, you know, so he, you know, he makes a lot of references to Romeo and Juliet on here. And I don't know if it's on purpose. Um, sorry. I try and teach my son that you should always write in whatever books you own. So I just had him, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, he mentions it that you have to find your Juliet in order to have a happy ending. That's how the song starts off. I think that's a joke, right? Because let, let, let me just read, uh, let me just read the ending of Romeo and Juliet. Um, Thou dost telleth the truth, both thine people be deadeth. So both, both of them die, there is no happy ending. Kind of interesting idea there. Super long song again, filled with remorse. Kind of like talking about that at the end. 20 to one is a full on sing song. I, <clears throat> I guess this is his second full album, considered a sophomore album, he has EPs and stuff. But it really does feel like he's struggling to figure out like who is he, you know? Like 
Is He All Things to All People? A song like this, where he's completely singing, it's auto-tuned, subtly auto-tuned. Um, I just don't know what to think. I think I like this song. I think it's catchy, I think it's cool. It's kind of a mix between like trying to find a good girl, which he says is hard, like catching a Pokemon. As, a, as an avid Pokemon Go player, I, I appreciate that line. I'm not sure it quite works as a hip hop fan, um, but I like the singing. So, you know, maybe he'll do this. Maybe he's just seeing what works. Maybe he's trying lots of things. Maybe he's just a young artist who had a lot of success very early and he's trying to figure it out. And then we get to the last two songs and the last two songs are just goddamn masterpieces. The last two songs are like, oh my God, <laughs> maybe this is two albums and I, and I sort of like one and I love the other. Heart Attack is just amazing. He's really talking about the generational difficulty he's been experiencing, very conscious. This sweet guitar line, basically no drums, these amazing lines, um, all about like life on the street. He talks about like, he has this whole line about his parents, right? And it's funny, because I just reviewed IDK, you know, last week, who's an American son of immigrants. And that touched on some of these issues as well, about how hard it is to be the son of immigrants because those immigrants have to work so damn hard to keep you in the country that's rejecting you, right? So just listen to this verse here. It's just brilliant. Oh my God. You can tell I'm reviewing someone British because I say brilliant. If you ever know people who go uh, abroad to England for any period of time, they come back and say everything is brilliant. And then they say cheers and you gotta slap them. Okay. How many of our parents had dreams that they abandoned so they could put food on the table? Intelligent, worthy, and able. That's someone's parent, you know? So what a cool inversion of like, hey, that's someone's daughter, to that's someone's parent. The thing that Dave does so well on both these albums are these cries for humanity. But how about he gets specific with an oddly disgusting example that I think really helps. And that affected the way that I see shit. Nightclub toilet. You peed on the seat. Because you don't know how it feels when your mom's got to clean it. So a nightclub toilet. Have you ever been to a nightclub or a bar? The toilet seats are disgusting. Everybody just pees on them. The reason they pee on them is because in that moment, you get to magically imagine that some house elf is gonna just clean everything up and everything's totally fine. And I'm in a third space. I'm not at work, I'm not at home. I'm in the magical world where everything gets cleaned up by somebody. And isn't it good that they clean it up because that means they have a job and I'm helping to keep people employed by peeing all over the seat. It's not true. Every time you pee on the seat, you make a mess somewhere in public, somebody's parents have to clean it up. It's a fascinating thing here that he's not talking just about some person. He's talking about the feeling that he feels about his mother having to clean it up or someone like his mother having to clean it up. And her boss treats her like she doesn't even mean shit. And she's got to wait for the bus in the rain and it's freezing. A beautiful image of a person whose job it is to clean your piss. The beat just drops out and then he just raps. And it's like he just goes and 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 goes. Just does not stop. And it's awesome. I love it when rappers do that, especially when they're able to pull it off and you just realize the strength of this voice, this an oddly anonymous voice that has such strength. And then it ends with what I presume to be his mother talking about the difficulties of making it to England. So, that's three times in the last month in which a rapper's mother has talked about the sacrifices that she has to make for her child. Tyler, the creator, IDK, and now Dave. I'm telling you, something is happening, okay? Something is happening in rap music. Mothers are no longer becoming the dear mama mothers who are, oh, you get a shot out and you're the best and I love you God and I love you mom. No, they're actually getting a voice and being more, more actually featured on the music. I don't know what it means, but I think it's interesting. Then the track, Survivor's Guilt, very kind of gentle beat. It's got this, uh, someone, Jorga, singing along. I don't know, Georgia. Interesting theme here. He basically is like 
confessing. This would maybe even fit better on psychodrama because he's basically on a, on a couch just confessing to some of his sins, you know? He talks about the, his ex-girlfriend had ivory skin and that was the elephant in the room. <laughs> Beautiful line. Beautiful idea, right? Elephants have tusks and race is the elephant in the room. Turns out, I fell in love with an Albanian. I know it's mad. We're not together because her family would hold us back. I saw their red flags. I wouldn't want my child to grow in that. God damn, that's clever. Because <laughs> the Albanian flag is a red flag. So this whole idea of like, the family would never accept him, that's true. And then he goes on to apologize for things that he said to black women in the past and about black womanhood. And the whole thing kind of ends with him talking about who he is. So let's get back to the original question. Is this album a disappointment? Is the album as good as Psychodrama? I don't think so. Uh, is the album as good as its title? We are all alone in this together. Probably not. But I wouldn't actually say it's a disappointment. I think it is a necessary, perhaps a little bit of a step down, but it's also kind of a step forward. I like the, uh, I like the guest appearances. I like that he is, he's become a super rich superstar. And so he's talking about that, but he hasn't lost the other stuff that makes him so interesting. I think we're sort of witnessing somebody who is sort of becoming multiple people at once while trying to hold it together with this moral center, which is how he ends the album with this great vulnerability. So, is it a disappointment? No, it's great. It's a great album, and it's further proof of the greatness of hip hop. It is just, seriously, I review all kinds of music, but I don't need to. There's, there's so much good music. All right, well until next time, uh, for, I'll just pick a random character from Romeo and Juliet. Okay, we're not Juliet. For chorus, no. For Benvolio. <clears throat> Benvolio. <clears throat> There's the camera. <clears throat>